My name is Mark Thomas Gibson. I guess I can start off by saying I'm from Miami, Florida originally. I was born in like 1980. Um, I've been making art my entire life. Early, early, early on, love drawing, um, watching movies, watching, you know, Ghostbusters or watching something like that, like Dragon's, what was it, Dragon Slayer was that movie? Things like that, like early on, I just wanted to like draw them. I, I felt drawing had a really strong connection towards like almost creating something, making something almost akin to the things that I was seeing. So I, you know, would sit there and draw like Ecto-1 over and over again, or draw like the, the ghost traps over and over and over again. And just like something about like building those things in the miniature allowed me to think, okay, what, how does it open? How does it bring a ghost in? How does it move? How does energy flow through it? Like I just kind of always thought drawing had that type of power. It's like, it's about truth. I'm trying to figure out truth. Like that line, this old Johnny Cash song, when it's like, uh, what is truth? I think in my teens, I heard that song and didn't really know the story behind it, but I just thought, you know, that question of like truth and how it affects justice, how it affects like our daily lives. And I've been thinking a lot about the idea of almost like, if like power was a giant, supernova or if it was a power was like a sun right and then truth is like light trying to pass by it it's going to like the gravitational well of it, it's going to bend it you know like that power constantly is bending truth and in some way i used to feel like i needed to make work that was extremely rigid in real response to that and try to be so extreme and factual with everything i did that like I, so to almost like define that gravity of, of power and its misshaping of truth but then I started realizing that if I started to bend, I could bend beyond it. I could twist it on itself. And so kind of taking in this mode of like comics and cartoons and animated line and contours, you, you, chin, you, you, gain, you gain the ability to speak to other truths. You, spend, you start to get into these kind of the subtext. The subtext doesn't lay on the bottom of the page, but it starts to lay inside of the mind of the viewer. And that's what I started becoming more interested in. And that's kind of what I work with is like the relationship between my image and the viewer and me trying to negotiate those two things together. I think one thing I've learned so far as being a teacher and being someone who makes work that deals with like the, the moment, the contemporary moment, if it's politics, if it's world events, if it's personal history, shared history that like there will be this call for artists and call for young people to make work or speak to that thing and some will will endeavor into it and they'll find a voice in it and then now they will continue to make that work and then for some they'll do it and they'll be like oh well, no i used to actually tell students kind of let them off the hook you know it's like if you go down that path and you realize that ain't your path then don't try to force it you know like that's just not you you know there's other ways you could participate in this world but for me, it was just like when I started allowing myself to do that more and more and more, that now when the waves change or the world does something, it's more like, damn, I got seven ideas for that. I got eight ideas for that. I want to like, I want to speak to that. I want to speak to this. And um, especially with this um, individual in the place of power in this country, that like, it's almost an hourly event maybe what I thought reality was or what I believe it to be truth was, what I thought was a shared truth is constantly being contradicted, being manipulated, even on the more basic, basic ways that we thought that we should be respected or understood in this culture. And knowing that, that's why when this, this pandemic kind of occurred, I could see, oh, there's two ways we're gonna deal with this. We're gonna deal with it responsibly are we gonna deal with it like we do with many things? We try to band-aid it when it actually needs to be stitched and it's gonna bleed over. And that's where we're at. Yeah, the, fo the foot and the shoe, like it was funny because I, I've never been one to put my body so much into a work and I'm always, I'm kind of interested in where, how bodies are used, especially black bodies are used in art. Um, as either a proxy or object or, you know, the subject, you know, how is it being used? And when thinking about my own body inside the work, I have a very particular scale, you know, I'm 6'4". So 
there's a there's a situation where I know my body. I know my body when it walks into a room. I know my presence. And so I wanted to try to come up with something as a symbol for me that I could put into the work to kind of also speak to some of the discomfort I have. And so it became like this kind of um, dress shoe with like like slacks, but like high water slacks or like basically slacks that are too small for you. And then these like white socks. Because it, I was thinking a lot about, I'm from the South and thinking about me moving to the North and then me going back into the South and how those two, those exchanges of being almost like a carpet, becoming a carpet bagger almost to your own people or becoming like, you know, citified or trying to be something you're, you're not. And those kind of contradictions just in those, those little symbols between like, you know, the shoe that you think is, but then as a hole in the bottom of it. You know, things that you see in like, comic books and cartoon culture in the 20th century, but then like putting the, the little bit of the elements that also represent me inside of that as well. So yeah, and also I think when I try to think about hands and feet, I think about these are the things in which we use to encounter the earth. We use to encounter objects, people, each other, even more now than, uh, than ever, you know, the fact that we are at a distance from one another, these ideas of how we actually interact with space is important. Um, so I think like, I remember when working with students and, and even as a student myself, always trying to emphasize like drawing hands, drawing feet, you know, and if I, if some young man would be like, oh, I don't need to draw her hands. And I'm like, so wait, you don't want to give this woman autonomy? You know, like making them have to think about what does it mean to actually have a figure that doesn't, has, isn't able to interact with the world? What does that mean? What it could mean even. So for me, that's why I kind of think about those elements and use them a lot and kind of re reuse them. I had a friend of mine who had done, done the, did the residency, I think uh, last year, I heard nothing but good things. And so I was like, yeah, I think I want to apply to that. I chose it because, well, my respect and, and, and admiration for the art of Elizabeth Murray, the way in which she was a mother, was a working artist, was able, you know, someone who I could identify with in many ways, but always found ways to push it, you know, like her work pushed it. The actual individual even around her, the society of individuals and artists that she created around her, um, like just Gober for one, like I think about like that kind of conversation, that type of generative space that she formed that I'm interested in. And I was curious about what that meant for Caller Works, what that meant for this space. That pleasure exchange that happens with, with artists inside of a residency, that's what I actually draw, I'm drawn to. I am really look forward to, to being there next summer and having an opportunity to be active with other people again. Uh, I'm more of a loner type uh, given my work because I'm a drawer and I'm in doing what I do. But those moments and those breaks to share the world with other artists is magical. And um, I can't wait for that. So thank you.